This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by We Use Coins. Dot com. More Bitcoin thoughts. You know, you'd never think a currency could become quite so interesting, but the fact is, you, you we're now at the point where you could make not just a movie about Bitcoin, you could make a whole drama series like, you know, uh, like Big Love or Breaking Bad or something like that. It could be almost as dramatic. I mean, seriously, online hits being put out on politicians, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kickstarter type campaigns where if a certain, you know, like a, some a politician gets assassinated, the, the, the person who did it collects the bitcoins and it's, you know, it's up to thousands of dollars in some of these cases. That's frigging, that's dramatic. That's way beyond just a, 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 a series about currency. If you're making a, a, a series. And I mean, you could make one that's just based on reality, right? I mean, just based on the things that happen in the real world. I mean, Dread Pirate Roberts, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Silk Road. This stuff is dramatic. Drug sales, weapons for Bitcoins. Although that you can't get that on Silk Road. But, uh, uh, you know, a financial boom or bubble that is... I mean, these numbers are, are, they absolutely dwarf the kinds of stuff that you were seeing in, in the, uh, in the dot com boom. I think Bitcoin went from what? Around $15 in 2011 to over $1,000 in late 2013. That would be a rise of, I guess, a, a factor of 90 over a period of two years. Now, maybe there were some stocks. Uh, during the dot-com boom that did see that kind of growth. But I have to question these folks that think Bitcoin is going to liberate us. I think that, that Bitcoin is probably a part of uh, one pillar of many that will help prevent you and I from sinking into the morass of chaos and authoritarian, totalitarian setups. I really can't see it fixing our problems by itself. Not even half of them. The long knives haven't really come out yet in the way the federal government handles the American people. There are many, many options they have not explored yet. What I expect them to do is to, obviously they'll continue this initial process of shutting down, you know, trying to cut the heads off the hydra, but soon they will start looking at the torso and the circulatory system of the hydra. What they'll do is they'll start trying to make examples of individual users, maybe even very small users, sort of the same way they make examples out of uh, people who download music. They'll treat Bitcoin users, uh, at least most Bitcoin users, <clears throat> they'll, they'll treat them, the ones that aren't strictly following some IRS code or whatnot, They'll treat them the same way that ranchers used to treat cattle rustlers, right? The ranchers couldn't catch most of the cattle rustlers, so they would just kill the ones that they could catch. The feds won't kill, for the most part, in this context. What they'll do is uh, go through their process and have, you know, uh, example-making prison sentences for people who are end users of Bitcoin. They'll hit Bitcoin the same way that they hit the drug world. Anyone can be arrested for selling or buying drugs, and in the same way, anyone can be arrested for buying Bitcoin and not following their complicated, impossible financial regimen. They won't try to kill Bitcoin, they'll just try to bring it under their wing, make sure that it's taxed, or something like you're required to report it, or whatever. Uh, they'll, they'll make some requirement that hardly anyone can follow. Uh, related to Bitcoin, and then they'll just arrest whichever Bitcoin users they feel like, because hardly any of them will even be able to follow the regulations. Also, some thoughts with regard to the price and value of Bitcoin. Now, it's possible that it's overbought at this point, uh, and certainly it's appearing on, you know, the cover of magazines to some extent. So we have gotten, I mean, they used to say you want to sell gold when it's on the cover of all the magazines, right? So that's starting to happen with Bitcoin. So it certainly means that people who, you know, uh, are selling probably have a reason to. But at the same time, there's a lot of things that have not happened yet that should drive Bitcoin up when they happen. 
incredibly important things. You know, for instance, no major currency has really gone belly up since Bitcoin came out. Supposedly, the crisis in Greece and the one in Cyprus had an effect of driving its price up, but those are tiny countries, not precisely even different countries. So, I mean, what's going to happen if the ruble tanks or the yen tanks or the dollar tanks, or there is a scare to the effect that that's about to happen? It would not take a large flight of people into Bitcoin to drastically raise its price. I mean, think what would happen if 1% of Russians uh, bought one Bitcoin. Well, heck, I guess I should run the numbers. That would be, what, 4 million new Bitcoin purchases? One Bitcoin each. What's the size of the total amount of Bitcoins that could ever be minted? Isn't it like 20 million? I mean, that's a, that would be a serious boost in the price. If my numbers are correct, then that would be, what, a 25% uh, it would probably drive the price up by 25%, unless the news of it went viral, in which case it would drive the price up even more. Anyway, just some more Bitcoin thoughts. Ridley out. Are you in favor of this? Then why do you use this? Instead, maybe you should use this. Spending a government's currency does more than anything else to prop up that government. Please starve the monster by using other currencies when you can. The most exciting of these is Bitcoin, the currency of peace. Inflation resistant, it's the easiest money to send and receive over the web. Get started at weusecoins.com.